Lover, one lovely day, came planning to stay. Green Dolphin Street supplied the setting, a setting for a night beyond forgetting. Through these moments of pause, memories will live in my heart. When I recall that love I found on, I could kiss the ground. Welcome to Mish Music Now. I am Michelle Weir and I'm here with Dina DeRose. And uh, we're at the GEN Conference. The GEN Conference is the Jazz Educators Network uh, Conference and it's in Reno. And I'll tell you what, we looked around quite a bit to try to find a place that wasn't an annoyingly loud, uh, you know, screaming casino with loud whatever <laughs> kind of music and cigarette smoke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we're actually in the uh, major performance hall area, which we're not supposed to be in. Don't tell anybody we're here. And this nice gentleman just sent a let us in. So we're sitting on some steps. And hey, Dina. Hi, Michelle. <laughs> Hi. Thank Hi. you. Uh, thanks for being here. I'm going to put this oh. where, yeah. I'm gonna put this where yeah. people can hear it. Hey, that's good. I hope that, yeah. I hope that ought to work. That'll work. Okay. Perfect. If you don't mind. <laughs> Thank you for having me today. You're welcome. Oh. I, I admire you so much. You know I do. I've told you, and I'll say it again. <laughs> Thank you. Um, let me just give you my 20 seconds on what I know about Dina DeRose, and that is that I've heard her live three times. Um, she lives in Austria. She's an American living in Austria and teaching full time and a performing artist. Um, I guess both teaching and being a performer. Yep, about 50 50. Yeah. About 50 50. Okay. So, all three times that I've heard Dina, she was with a trio and with the great Matt Wilson, who is like a really super creative, such, such a highly respected drummer among drummers and among, I think, all human beings that know him. <laughs> uh, and then Martin Wind is your usual bass player. And um, uh, yeah. yeah. We're going on. Seven, uh, well, about 15 years as a trio. Mm -hmm. uh, but Matt and I have been playing together for 25 years. Wow. Yeah. That's so, yeah. something special very, happens very in special. that, right? Yeah. Totally. Well, yes, something very special happens. But I have to say, from the very first time mm -hmm. that we ever played, yeah. from no one, I knew <laughs> that he was my drummer. And his response, you know, his, you know, response to me the, from note one was just a big smile and yes, this is going to yeah. be fun. Yeah. And the fun ride has lasted 25 years. That's awesome. Yeah. 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 Well, Pretty chemistry, amazing. musical chemistry. Yeah. Totally. Um, so when I've heard Dina, um, I heard the trio and it was just always so thrilling to me uh, because because it's selfless, per, first of all. I know that sounds a little bit odd, but they get out of their heads, <laughs> it, it feels to me, and it becomes heart and soul and passion and fun and silliness and adventure and trying stuff and not being afraid. Or, I don't know, maybe there is some fear somewhere in there, but whatever it is, they get past it and this beautiful, super creative uh, musical adventure happens and I've really really sincerely been um, just inspired many times by by hearing you thank you yeah 
So I wanted to ask you this. I know you work with your regular trio. I know you're also on the road around Europe and around the U.S. too sometimes? Around the U.S. or Asia or Russia, whatever, yeah. Okay, cool. All over. Yeah. So what do you do when you don't get to use your regular trio or do you get to travel with them? Um, I travel with them a bit in the States. Uh, I was able to play with Matt here, but Martin wasn't able to come, so mm -hmm. we had the great bassist Lynn Seaton yeah. join us, and he just fit right in. Well, mm -hmm. We had played in New York 20 years ago, um, but we hadn't played, Lynn and I, for really the, since then. Mm -hmm. So I think having clear charts, being clear myself with what I'm doing, um, being able to lead the trio, um, cues, whatever. Lynn was able to just come in and, and make it all happen in, mm -hmm. in just as beautiful a way as anybody ever that I played with. That's great. I mean, he just he's a professional anyhow, but, but mm -hmm. it's just, it makes it, you know, if my, if my charts weren't clear and, and I'm not very clear about my intentions, it would have been, I would have had some fear. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, that, then that comes up. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I don't get to travel with Matt and Martin very much. And, I, and living in Europe, mm -hmm. I travel all the countries and, and I've got different rhythm sections in different countries that I tend to work with, but you know, bass players, they're always busy. Mm -hmm. So it's usually maybe the drummers I work with more and the bass players have to come in, and, and maybe I've never played with them before. Um, but again, having sort of my stuff together very strongly, not that I do it the same way every time, because I don't, mm -hmm. but my charts have a certain, you know, some of them are quite arranged, but some of them are more open. So when I'm in a situation where I know I haven't played with the bassist, I tend to choose the charts that maybe aren't so complex. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of, you know, weighing the situation mm -hmm. and, and the players. Uh, these days with YouTube, if someone sends me a name that I'm going to play with, oh, the bass was so-and-so and I've never played with them, I check them out on YouTube mm -hmm. and see what they're playing like, you know, and who they've played with and mm -hmm. sort of what their style is, you know, because sometimes the promoters don't think of that aspect. Uh -huh. They just think, okay, he's a bass player, he'll fit. Do you get to pick your favorite Italian bass player or whatever? or do, Not do, always. The promoters? Promoters or sometimes the musicians mm -hmm. that hire me to come, they already have their band mm -hmm. or, and then the bass player, their regular bass player can't make it. And a lot mm -hmm. of times it is the bass player, is it? So, become a bass player. Because <laughs> you're going to have a lot of work. We all know we that, but <laughs> we do need more bass players. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think Having the opportunity to play with a lot of different musicians helps me to be stronger at what I'm doing because I, I have to lead. Mm -hmm. So that's for me. It's like I just have to know what I'm going to do. Basically, generally, when it comes to leading the band, putting the sets together, of course, moderating the entire thing. Mm -hmm. um, but when we're in the music and we're playing. I'm not really thinking, uh -huh. you know, it's at that point, once we start the tune, I, I, I think in the beginning of working with other musicians, I was a little worried about, is he going to make that hit or that kick I have, and the, or is he going to go to that time field that's next? And I would always over lead mm -hmm. physically, visually, and sometimes audibly. You know, we're going, uh -huh. and, and it's very clear on the chart, but I was mm -hmm. over, over leading. Micromanaging. Micromanaging. And mm -hmm. it took me out of the music. Mm. So through the experience of years of traveling and playing with these people, at one point I just realized somehow, I really don't remember how, but I knew that I had to be strong in what I was doing. Mm -hmm my vision of whatever song it is, the feeling, the expression. If I had the focus on, on me, of course my ears are open listening, but if I was really 
in my zone, they were going to come mm. with me. Or huh. the connection of the three or four of it, sometimes quartet, became stronger. Yeah, that's so interesting. Yeah, yeah. nonverbal. Nonverbal. The, 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 somehow the energy, the presence, the leadership you communicated uh, just worked by virtue of you just being strong and stronger. In your, in and, your, yeah, and staying with the story yeah. or staying with the, the music or the solo development or whatever it was. If I were, uh, you know, right on my path through it, they, they, they were there with me. Yeah. Most and of what the time. do you do in cases where, okay, you've got beautiful charts, you're well prepared in that respect, you're a strong leader, you understand very well how to rehearse uh, a group and try to make things happen as quickly as you can in a, in a short rehearsal, probably. Sound check rehearsal. That's and it. And a sound check rehearsal. I never rehearse. Right, just run the, run the head or whatever. Get and, the time feel. Yeah. Get the intro, ending, time feel. Right. Or right. time feels. And then what have you done in a case <clears throat> where it, um, it kind of didn't feel like it was happening, you know, on the gig? Like it just wasn't, you know. There have been times. <laughs> Usually when it wasn't happening, maybe this is where it came from, actually, my last statement. When it wasn't really happening, it was because I was worrying too much that they wouldn't be playing it. Oh. The, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. maybe, maybe in my mind, I had preconceived notions of what they should be doing. Mm -hmm. Because of my arrangements or whatever. Uh -huh. And you're so used to playing with your players, right? Yeah. So, so I just assumed, you know... So it, that's what sort of, then I would have to feel like I needed to micromanage more. Mm -hmm. And once I stopped doing that and just maybe trusting them more mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and uh, allowing them to bring their artistic uh, vision mm -hmm. to my yeah. arrangements, uh -huh. opened up my arrangements and allowed mm -hmm. me to even you know, uh, deepen them or mm -hmm. expand them or maybe if they missed the kick into the bridge and, and I was at the bridge and Matt was at the bridge or the drummer was and the bass player missed it, we just kept going mm -hmm. and he would finally come in. Yeah. So I mean that's what I mean by I didn't want to be at the point where we got to that bridge and Matt and the drummer and I are there and the bass player isn't I'm not going to turn around and say yeah, yeah. no we're right in no letter D oh, <laughs> I just I stopped doing that I just would continue yeah and, and they just would know see that's the beauty to me there's the heart and soul of it all the 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 idea of just the continue and that's why the flow I dig your playing in your trios you know um because you're bringing that on all kinds of levels, the just the flow, the flow of it, and don't choke it, <laughs> yeah. don't control it. Well, Overly music control. is flow. I mean, music, mm -hmm. any energy is flow. So whether it's the song I'm singing, or the or playing, or the solo I'm playing, or scatting, or whatever it is, if I'm not in the music, nothing's going to happen. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's what I mean by the, the sometimes with the arrangements of some, you know, the bass. If I weren't really in my place strongly, they're unsure mm -hmm. if they're right and if they're in the right place. So yeah, yeah I think just finding your finding the flow of the music and staying with it. Mm -hmm. One thing about Matt Wilson is that he's got that flow. And that's the one yeah. thing from the from the note one that we when we played, mm -hmm. it was like, oh, okay, mm -hmm. it's like a river flowing, and you just I I, I jumped on the little yeah. canoe going down there, you mm -hmm. know. It was just, and that's what I've really tried to. Whenever I have a taste of fear coming in, or an unsureness, or not trusting the bass or horn player, or whoever it was, when that happens, I just go right into. Mm -hmm. And I know it sounds like I'm not, you know, just listening to me. No, I'm not listening to just me. I'm listening to the music that's in me. Mm -hmm. It's not me. It's not this. your ego. No. You. Like, I mean, it's the music. Like me. How am I? Are they liking it? Or no. you know, I mean, you don't go there at all, right? It's just. I used to long, long time mm -hmm. ago. Mm -hmm. 
but uh, Effortless Mastery helped that, yeah. and, and a bunch of other books and mm-hmm. and meditation, and, yeah. you know, and Do you meditate yoga, regularly? and uh, from time to time we get into a regular routine. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, yoga, walking in the forest, yeah. uh, bike riding. All those things yeah. are similar. Right. There's a certain flow. If you can get out of your head when you're walking through the forest, all of a sudden there's another flow. Yeah. And if you can stay with it, I'm with all you of about a sudden, the nature. Everything opens up. Yeah. Many, plus the slot machines, <laughs> yes. the, the this <clears throat> and the video poker, the, the focus on the. Uh, we, uh, no, we don't like that as much <laughs> no. as we like a walk in the forest. Yes. Uh, thank you, Dina, so much. Could you, will you tell us, uh, tell everybody where you're teaching, first of all, you know. Yes, I'm teaching in Graz, Austria, mm-hmm. at a university um, that actually has the oldest jazz institute in Europe. Mm-hmm. I think it started in 65, 1965. It's called the Kube Jazz Institute. And it's at the University of Music and Performing Arts in Graz. Uh-huh. Good. And I just uh, heard from you, it's an English-speaking environment, actually. In the Jazz Institute only. Oh, okay. <laughs> we're, okay. The, we're the most international institute in the university that has about 15 institutes. Oh, okay. So they have opera, they have musicals, they have all kinds of things. But yeah. But we are the most international. We have 120 students from 30 different countries. So, and I have 12 students from nine different countries. Yeah. None of them English nice. speaking. Uh huh. So. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So we yeah. work on English. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dina. I'm sure. You know, I, I will put your CDs and um, you know any tour dates or, or whatever in the description part of the YouTube. Uh, if we're, depending on where you're watching this, please be sure to go to Mish Music and Shaw Weir YouTube channel and um, check out, you know, uh, a little bit more about Dina. I'll put her bio and, you know, all that stuff. And uh, thanks, Dina. Um, oh, thank you, Michelle. Mutual I, respect. Thank you. Totally. Thank you. Well, I'm a fan of yours, you know, and um, I wish you the best. And we'll see you, thank you next time. Next time. Okay. And goodbye, everybody. Thanks so much. See you.